Just uh, bringing you a, an update on uh, my stainless steel. It's the first time I've ever tried to uh, uh, heat treat stainless steel, in this case CPM154, which is uh, made, CPM stands for Crucible Particle Metallurgy. Crucible being the uh, name of the manufacturers based in the, in the US. Uh, it's an equivalent almost to RWL34. They're not quite the same, but there's not a lot in between the two steels. I think there's the addition of vanadium or molybdenum in RWL34, which there isn't in CPM154. CPM154 is slightly more expensive than the RWL34. Uh, I've done some research and it appears that a lot of people are saying the heat treatments of the steels are exactly the same. But in actual fact, um, the Rockwell readings and tempering measurements that I measured were different. Uh, so the steel does behave differently. The two steels do behave differently. Um, I have been not happy with the uh, first uh, heat treatment that I ran. Um, I ostentatized at 1065 centigrade. Uh, I'll try and put the conversion figures into Fahrenheit for those of you that work in Fahrenheit better. Um, and I held the steel for 30 minutes, quenched in the quench plates, um, measured as quenched uh, quench plates, hardnesses of uh, 61.5 to 62. Uh, then I put them in um, dry ice and isopropanol overnight. Uh, measured the harnesses the next day, they'd gone up to 63.5. Tempered them uh, at 220 centigrade and it didn't alter the Rockwell harnesses one bit. Increased the temperature to 250, tempered again for two hours. That brought the Rockwell harnesses down one point to about 62 to 62.5. Tested the blades, extremely chippy. Uh, Retempered at 270 for two hours, no differences in the uh, Rockwell hardness measurements. Retempered at 315 degrees centigrade for two hours, no differences in the Rockwell hardness measurements. Tested the blades again, chippy, chipped very easy. Um, then I did a drastic thing and I tempered the blades in what's known as the sensitization range. The sensitization range for most stainless steels, from what I've now learned, is around about sort of 460 to 560, 600 degrees centigrade. In that range, uh, the, steel, the stainless steel becomes slightly less tough and it loses a slight amount of its stainless properties. And uh, the steel manufacturers do not recommend that you temper your knives in that range. But at this point, I'd given up on that on those on that heat treat, and so I thought, well, nothing invention, nothing gained, just for the sake of uh, education, self-education, I'd do it. Um, and I managed to uh, well, I first of all noticed that there was a slight increase in hardness. I think I must have tempered it around about sort of four, I think I did a, a 460 degree temper, uh, measured the hardnesses and to my surprise, well not actually because I looked at the um, tempering diagram, the hardnesses went up. At one point I measured 64 HRC. Uh, the curve as you go in temperature around about sort of 400, 500 degrees C, the hardness of the steel goes up and then there's a rapid drop off uh, above 500. Um, so I tempered them at 530 degrees C uh, for two hours and I measured hardnesses then at 59. I thought, ah, great. So I tested them, brass rod test them. They passed the brass rod test. Uh, I thought, that. Well, I'll temper them again for a second time at that temperature and then it brought them down to 55 uh, at which time they were too soft. So um, I then 
uh, annealed the blades again. So I wrapped them all up in uh, in the stainless steel uh, tool wrap, and it was a lengthy process in the kiln. I uh, baked them for I think it was four hours at 900 centigrade and then or it may have been two hours top of my head I got it written down in the house it may have been two hours at 900 degrees centigrade and then they had a cooling cycle where they cooled at the rate of uh, 15 degrees centigrade uh, until they reached 650 degrees centigrade at which point the furnace was then um, turned off and then they furnace cooled down to ambient temperature uh, and of course that fully annealed the blades so I've got the rest of the blades uh, in a fully annealed state but I did build up this one I did um, re-harden this one knife um, and this time I austenitized at a lower temperature at 1045 degrees centigrade um, I had no dry ice left at this time so uh, I quenched in the quench plates, put it into the freezer at minus 18, minus 20 degrees centigrade for a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes. Um, measured the Rockwell harnesses, again about 61.5. Uh, tempered uh, for two hours at 250 degrees C. Uh, measured the Rockwell harnesses, they were uh, too high they were still uh, above 60 degrees 60 HRC retempered for two hours at 315 degrees C brought them down just below 59 HRC uh, so that was uh, a, um, quite a hot temper compared to what I would do for 01 made multiple Rockwell hardness tests as you can see uh, I'll put a little clip in um, then I spent two days with this knife uh, in the kitchen chopping up my dog food I've got these things called um, dentist sticks the dogs love them they're very chewy very uh, difficult to cut really so I spent the whole uh, bunch of time just chopping them up for the dogs um, coming out into the garden at various times in the day whenever I had a spare moment uh, hacking the blade around uh, slicing banging it into stumps uh, pulling pieces of wood across the blade, hammering on the blade from different angles with different pieces of wood, some hard woods, some soft woods. Um, I dropped the knife multiple times onto the floor. Oh, before I did that, I processed uh, a pheasant uh, and I was very hard on the blade, pushing it through the leg bones and banging it with my hand. And I did get one tiny symmetrical chip uh, in the blade very very tiny um, bear in mind this is approximately a 25 degree scandy uh, with no micro bevel as such on it uh, if I'd put a micro bevel on I think the geometry of the blade would have um, given, given the edge even more strength uh, so it was quite a, a, a zero grind really which isn't the strongest um, on the wood there was absolutely no damage the edge held up very well and the dog food chopping up it held very well um, it was only battening it basically through the leg bone which um, took the first tiny little chip out then the other damage was done by dropping the knife multiple times onto concrete uh, from about a metre and a half, five foot, six foot off the ground. Um, and even as it is now, um, this knife could be restored literally in five minutes on the grinder. Um, by hand, obviously, it would take you a bit longer, or quite a bit longer, because, uh, you know, removing steel by hand is a lot more of a lengthy process. So, this is a, I've got here a working heat treat. I'm sure that if this knife was used sensibly, it, would, uh, it, would, it wouldn't fail. But caveat is, uh, I've very little experience, or well, virtually zero experience with stainless. All my work for the last eight years has been carbon steel, 01, 01 steel. 
Um, I still feel that uh, the hardness is for this to perform and um, for the edge to flex and return needs to be about 59 to 59.5 at 60 HRC they were chippy at below 50, 60 HRC they were flexing uh, so uh, um, that's heat treat number two so heat treat number three will happen next week when I'll have some more dry ice I'm going to probably try austenitize in a slightly lower temperature still maybe 10 40 um, then I'll um, do the freeze quench uh, and I'll build up another knife um, and test that one and see if it performs any better now I've got a datum with this one you see I know what this one did uh, if the other one does better, then I know I've improved it. If I if the other one does the same, then there probably can't be any more improvements. Um, but positive, helpful comments uh, from people that have genuine hard user experience with CPM 154 or equivalent with a fine Scandi edge. In the comment section would be greatly appreciated uh, if you haven't got that knowledge or experience with a fine scandy edge on um, sort of a powder metallurgy steel then uh, just don't leave a comment um, because it will just clutter up the, the helpful comments that may come in um, so that's it I just want to be up front with you to tell you that uh, um, I'm happier, happier with this knife than I was with the first batch. Uh, the first batch I chipped out so easily, it was incredible. I was very disappointed. Uh, this one impressed me until I started to really abuse it and then I did get a tiny chip but maybe that's to be expected. It is a fine Scandi and they're not the strongest of edges. Uh, it's a wood grind. It's not really designed for um, chomping through bone straight on, so to speak. Um, updates to come, no doubt, when I eat, treat the next lot. Uh, not happy to let them out yet. Those that are waiting for a stainless knife from me. Oh, whatever test I did, I left it outside overnight under a wet stump on the ground to see if the stainless would take any rest on or anything like that. It didn't, fine. So that's it. Uh, updates to follow, no doubt. Thank you. The first little chip was just there. And that one was caused on the leg bone of the pheasant. And uh, it's a very symmetrical circular chip, which uh, indicates that the uh, structure of the steel is very uniform we've got a roll there and that's the biggest damage was done to the tip quite a chunk taken out there so the blade is in is showing that in places it's rolled and in other places it's chipped quite possibly um, the chips have happened after there's been a roll so the roll would have weakened the steel to start off with